Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another workshop. This is Guardian Training with myself, Alexis of Ascension Diaries, and this month's theme is protection. It is a huge theme, and just like the last themes, it's kind of hard to know what direction I'm going to take it, but that's kind of the fun that you entrust me with. And I can't wait to bring to you all of these topics and all of these, you can't even see it, all of these things that I've channeled basically about how to, I want to say, correct and reaffirm protection energy and techniques for those of us in the community. And it being February 2023 right now where we are recording this, if you've been under a rock, wonderful. I'm jealous. I want to move in with you. But there has been a lot going on with the mainstream media, basically, in a way, I would say demoralizing and threatening people's feelings of protection from the sky, the land, the water, the roads, the transportation here in North America, America. So we have an excellent time right now to co-create some energies that are going to be helpful for just the continuation of 2023 in a smooth way, guardians. And guardians are very much pros at protection. They have natural protection instincts. And so this is going to be a lot of things I'm sure you already know, but the way I'm going to deliver them may make you think differently. And so I would, I would ask you to consider watching this workshop all the way through and giving me your comments at the end. Obviously, please fill in any gaps or extrapolate on some things perhaps that you have more knowledge on or it reminds you of. And we're going to build out this resource the best we can as a group. And thank you again for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries so we can do this every month on the 18th together, fortifying together and creating these light code packages in a very organized and succinct way once a month. And these months have gone by very fast. Yeah, I feel like I was literally just doing this workshop for the sexual healing workshop last month. So <laughs> we're back at it again. And yeah, we definitely need to know about protection this month, or at least just, just work on that. Just get that a little bit more to the front of your mind. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is not what I normally do in this video, but for all intents and purposes, is to first kind of clear your field really quick. And I want you, after I do this action, I'm going to clap my hands. I want you to kind of hold your energy center and kind of squeeze from the inside to kind of charge your, your auric field after I do the clap. So the clap's going to happen as the clearing technique. And I invite you to do the clap with me in your own home right now, as you're watching this, whatever time you're watching this. And then after the clap, I want you to squeeze from the inside, squeeze, 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 flex your abdominal muscles, squeeze and charge in a way like uh, strengthen your aura like that and push outward and solidify that auric area because what we're going to be talking about is definitely going to need that kind of space so with me are you ready to do the clap so i'm going to back up so it's not super loud but i need to do it because i have a whole room i need to clear also and fortify for this snapping also works too but it's not as effective and also just just in general if you really just need a quick clear this is very effective there's a reason for it. So ready? I'm going to try and do it right the first time. One, two, three, clear. Let's do another one. One, two, three, clear. And squeeze. One more. One, two, three, clear. <laughs> I got to do another one. That one wasn't a good one. Last one. It's going to hurt your hands, but it's worth it. One, two, three, clear. is canceling the sound. Okay, well, interesting. The recording is canceling the sound, but you saw me do it. That's good. Just want you to push your hands. And we're just going to push our hands out and kind of fortify our aura a little bit. Just push that those sore hands <laughs> out there. Really feel it. And before we kind of continue and go on after we do this particular part, I'm going to also make sure you have a pen and paper nearby because you're going to want to scribble some notes and additional doodles, perhaps, 
that it's going to come through. Trust me, just get yourself something to write with if you can. Let's begin with today's workshop. We did, that was a good clear. So another way for protection that's specifically physical that we're I wanted to talk about right away was mudras. Mudras came in really strong and this was the mudra that they were wanted me to show you for protection. Both sides, if you can see where my thumb is. So try this for a little bit. Hold on to this for a second while I'm talking. Okay. And if you have any particular uh, frankincense oil, or if you have any rose incense or something of the like, I would say, I would invite you to burn it or apply it to yourself as well, just out of the, I would say, out of the theme of protection. So the reason why we need to cover this topic today is because there's a lot of holes and issues in my experience as my own person and also in our community when it comes to confidence, which is caused by usually abuse, which is holes that are caused in the aura due to unexpected, unexpected transgressions. And for this video, I wanted to speak and we're going to work with the inner child first. And then we're kind of kind of mature through that process. So we don't want any holes because then we're going to have dream time issues and waking issues where people are going to keep trying to pull on your energy and take your life force. Basically, we don't want that. Obviously, nobody wants that, but some of us can't even help it due to the traumatic experiences we have in process as children, mostly because a lot of the time there is techniques that are, I would say, temporarily helpful of running and masking your energy to try and protect yourself in a temporary way, but those also become detrimental to your health and they break down the integrity of your body, basically. So I've experienced this. I know this firsthand. I'm speaking just out of a humble heart and hoping that what I've learned and the whole day of meditating and stuff I did today, this is going to bring a little bit of help. So the first thing that I was doing for my space and fortifying my greater aura is adding crystals. First of all, these physical entities to support me. So I may then continue having that protected auric space and purge and find these holes in my aura. So before we get going, also, I want to mention spe specifically dark colored crystals like hematite, black kyanite, obsidian. This is a black kyanite piece. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like, I don't even know what it looks like, but it's very cool. They all look like this in some form or another. And then we have selenite as well. So here's another, here's a piece of selenite. For example, these two energies I have in all the corners of my house currently, or at least my office for sure. And then I have, like I said, hematite and quartz. So here's a quartz piece. I don't have a hematite piece to show you, but you should know it's it's a dark crystal. It's dark, solid kind of rock. And I have them all over the property, lining the property line of my whole home outside. So just as a a helpful hand to kind of give me a little bit more of a, a wider auric protection to begin the personal work. Then I would say we need to work on the, the ability to quickly clear off of yourself when you're starting to feel things are getting stuck to your aura or you're having issues that are pulling down your energy. Uh, like I said, the clapping works really good. Another way is to get into a salt bath right away and completely submerge yourself. I call it baptism because it really is. And it is absolutely necessary during this time. So I'm sure you've already found yourself baptizing yourself or bathing regularly in the last little while, especially the last week has been quite, the last two weeks has been quite the struggle, I would say on a, on a overall basis. And <laughs> these sort of techniques have been able to pull me through so I can kind of get through the hard part and continue with this process this month because wow this month was definitely a challenge and I know that challenging these holes 
is going to bring about the conflict that I've been suppressing and the conflicts that we've been suppressing to finally be met. And it takes a lot of maturity to be a protector because we have to basically be able to know that whatever we receive, we have to be the bigger person. And that takes a lot of effort. <laughs> But the more, the stronger your aura is, the easier it is for other stuff to fall off. So keeping your aura very strong, obviously with cardiovascular and, and salt water, drinking it, bathing in it, keeping your electrical charge high is so helpful for this. And so now that we're kind of pre moving into it, I want to speak now about where these holes can come from. And we're so we're going to go back to childhood. So what I was channeling for all of us today was to discuss a very difficult topic, unfortunately, but it has to be done, which is spanking, or I would say corporal punishment when you are a child or a baby, I would say, before your brain is basically, or your mind has developed into adulthood, the child mind basically is designed to fully trust their parents. Fully trust. Full trust. They have no idea what, what non-trust is. And a lot of us have gone through this. This has been a generational trauma that is prolific throughout people. If you weren't circumcised as a child, number one, which happens almost immediately for some people, that is an immediate a uh, corporeal loss uh, and then an auric hole basically getting torn open in the in the inner child and the trust in the aura of the of the child. So number one, we have to just bring about attention and extra support for that infant self in all of us that was harmed in such a way. So let's just fortify that for a minute and just hold the children, every single child that endured this. And please tell them that we are deeply sorry that this happened to them and that in this lifetime, we wish them to regain more than they came in, their power, their strength, and their sovereignty. This does not mean that you are broken. It means that you have been given a purpose. And the purpose is to continue paying it forward and protecting the children and stopping the intergenerational trauma. Now, like I said, if you weren't in that scenario and you weren't mutilated like that as a child, quickly, most other children go into their childhood and are uh, struck by their parent for misbehaving or a control technique, basically, to try and deter a behavior of a child. Now, children are chaotic, wild energy, of course. And with animals as well, they're very body sensitive. So pushing back on them, giving them boundaries physically, if they start slapping you in the face or biting or ripping at you, because they will do that. They will push you and they will do it to each other as a way to kind of assert their dominance against each other. It's a very animalistic time in a child's life, but the deep trust and love that they have with their parents. A lot of these people and a lot of us had that ripped away from us when we were little. And I want to say it like that in a dramatic way because we're going to replenish that. But just to kind of bring up that raw emotion because we do need to clear that. So if you, which just in just for the record, it is not appropriate to strike a child, especially on their bare bottom or like in some sort of compromising position it's also not good to threaten this as well to a child and then have it come along as some of us is like oh wait till your your other parent gets home they're going to punish you sort of idea that is extremely damaging to the brain body soul heart of a child to know that they can no longer trust their only people their literal creators to protect their body, to protect their, their spirit, basically, from attack. And that loss of trust that can happen at a very young age can rip open a or auric hole that people may not ever notice has happened to them. And again, a lot of the time, the popular technique is to go for the bare bottom. And that is the basically the base of your power, your root chakra, 
your most trusted spot, your back, you know, you can't even really see it. It is um, very vulnerable. And this area is, is often then neglected afterwards this happens because it's a loss of power. It's a loss of control. As a baby, as a child, to see the power and the strength of a fully grown adult being acted upon them, it for most children, they immediately disassociate. They immediately fractal and fracture off from their consciousness as a way to protect themselves because clearly an adult aggressing against a child is not okay. It's just not. There, it's not. And I know as a social and a sort of communal situation, we as a collective are moving away from that. But there's been much deeper levels of abuse that is still going on and people think is totally appropriate. Why? Because this was a generational trauma. They, your parents had this happen to them if they did this to you, almost definitely, and their parents and their parents and so on. I didn't actually look up when this was a popularized thing. But I believe it was a a it was popularized. Oh, I want to say probably around the, the world World War One. I, I want to say, but for sure, uh, it's been quite a, an issue for quite a long time. I, probably much longer than that. But I didn't look into that research. But what I did see was that this was the whole that we really want to focus on in this particular workshop is that loss of trust and that abandonment of the body. And the safety that occurred in our lives, in your lives, and is happening to children still to this day, maybe even in your own lives, maybe it was your own child you did this to. And since then, maybe uh, you're probably being like, oh, Alexis, whoops, or you know better, and you've gone out of your way to seek forgiveness from the person that you struck. So ho'oponopono is a Hawaiian word for this forgiveness technique basically to say I'm sorry please forgive me I love you and let's move on I don't even know if I said it right but that's basically the practice and it is a greater practice and there is people walking around saying that they are using this practice now specifically with every single person to basically clear each other's auric holes and regain a trusting relationship with people that you have an abusive background with I would encourage you, if your parents struck you as a child, that you will reach out to them and your spirit form, you know, with your prayers and with your astral self and your, you know, speak to the, their, their spirit through your heart because you're connected, uh, near, you're literally connected between your heart spaces with your family and your parents. But if you have to go so out of your way to physically talk to them about why what they like you know that they did something that you believe was inappropriate and that you want to properly kind of talk it out and go through the whole ponopono sequence of this forgiveness understanding and you know moving on with the awareness that this is not okay and you did not consent to that and as an adult you would never consent to something like that so we just kind of have to take on that responsibility now and reparent ourselves. Go back in your memory, if you can, to the first time you realized that you were going to be, uh, I want to say disciplined, but it's not discipline. You're going to be abused and physically abused by your parent who has outweighs you by like five times. It's completely ridiculous. It doesn't make sense in nature and all. And it was a program that was inserted into society to break apart the family, the nuclear family and the trust between parents and children. So the children wouldn't be able to support their, wouldn't desire to support their parents or inherently trust them and then fall back into basically the devil, basically into the system away from God. And they use this practice of striking you in that area of your body in in other, basically in other realms, basically into initiations or hazings at, in other programs that young adults and adults can go into. This hazing technique is prolific, basically. And we are going to be addressing it. So again, I want you to think of that time and sit with yourself 
if there was that moment of anticipation, knowing you were about to be struck or hurt, and you knew there was like nothing there to protect you because your protector was about to harm you. So that is a difficult place. So we're going to go there and we're just going to sit with our inner child or the little version of us just right now. So I want you just to like take a moment. We're going to go back. Go back to the little version of you who is awaiting this punishment, who is about to have their trust loss and perhaps their body you disassociate for the first time or fractal off from your body the first time. And I want you to basically grab that fractal that you're watching walk out of the body. I want you to grab it and pull it back into the heart. And if you maybe fractal a little couple times, I want you to just grab your energy body like this and pull it back to the center. And in a way, I want you to grab the inner child or the child from behind and grab them and hold them and let them know that we are protected no matter what. And the harm that your parent and your guardian is showing you is their pain is the generational trauma that they endured and never processed. They were not able to choose better because they were also not able to retrieve their soul from the time they were abused. In doing so, in pulling your fractals back into that body, hold it. Hold, feel the warmth. I'm feeling very warm. Feel the warmth, pull it close, pull it close. Breathe and I want you to smile with the confidence knowing that there is nothing that can break you. Your spirit is true, it is God and it is very much in the right to be here, knowing that those who strike against you are the ones you came here to heal. You are here to break this cycle. You found it. You found the problem. You found the abuse cycle in your own genetic line. You found it. You can look it in the eyes and look at it with compassion, knowing that no matter what they do to you, you already made it, and you're already here to completely reprogram your entire genetic lineage. As you already have survived, you're already adults. This is the truth. And in this moment, you can feel satisfaction for that child that you followed through for them, that you went out in the world and eventually found the confidence and the compassion to come here in this moment and heal and fortify a better solution for your entire genetic line and your ancestry. I want you to feel that satisfaction because as you know, that smugness and that joy that maybe you're feeling right now that you did survive and that not only did you survive, but you survived to overcome the trauma, overcome the negative programming and align again with God, align again with source creator and knowing that you are here to burst through and completely annihilate the lower vibrational realm so it must match you or be incinerated. <laughs> know that there is your guides and your guardians are nearby and that you are never alone. And we can say Ho'oponopono. and claim this trauma as your own and then move on from it. Claim the power back 
Again, it's a badge that you earned that showed you what you survived in this earth incarnation in order to transmute it. So wherever it is on your body that you were struck during that time, I want you to place your hands, obviously. And I want you just to engage the area until you, you feel sensation. Now you may notice this area is actually numb the first time that you touch it. it you may notice a numbness right away. I want you to begin pinching and poking and bringing this part of your body back to life right now, wherever it is. I want you to engage the flesh in that area to first wake it up, get those nerves back to it. And you may notice again that there is a numbness there. That is the disassociation that we're pulling back. That is the auric area that we are going to be re-energizing right now. First, yeah, pinch, pinch and roll the area, like poke, poke, poke till you can feel, you can feel the sensations again. You may even feel a little raw or like soreness in the area, wherever it was, you know, wherever it was, you know, you know, wherever you got struck, however many times, whatever, whatever area, I want you to work on that area. Just let it feel first, let it feel first, get those nerves going. And now I want you to blow on your hands, rub them, say, I love you, I repair you, and may we continue on stronger than ever. And I want you now to place your hands on that area and fix your aura through time and space. Make it unstoppable. Breathe the love into the area and say, I will never abandon you. I will never actively harm you. You are safe with me. I am your protector. Now let's work together. and share these healing energies with others. May we see those with areas of pain and coldness, see where others have disassociated and fractaled with pure clarity as our aura is full. It is solid, it is unbreachable. Now, bring your hands over to your heart again. Let's say, I love you. I love my body. I love my inner child. I love my adult self. I love my mind. I love my spirit. I love my tenacity. <laughs> Is what's coming in at the end. My, my desire to live unharmed and protect the innocent is established. And my boundaries are fortified. I repair the generational trauma through loving my body, mind, and spirit. I repair my generational trauma by being true to who I am and being compassionate to others as they walk this path. May we all rise out of confusion, despair, and fear. 
with crystalline auras, unbreakable, unbreakable, unbreakable. We are free to experience life with a new smugness of our, I want to say, entourage of angels. May that entourage of angels show themselves to me when they need them, when they need to. to continue reminding me that I am protected, I am strong, and I am guided. I am loved by the universe, and I am welcome here. You are loved, and I welcome you and accept you. We are protected. So this soul retrieval that we're doing basically bringing back that moment where you ran and putting it back in the body, knowing that it is safe there. Now that you're an adult, you've moved out of those situations. You were able to get out and away, be proud that there was a protecting force that brought you to me and to this point in your life, despite what you've gone through. Now, some of these protective forces are familiars or spirit guides or animals. You may have had one at that time in your life when you first experienced this that maybe kept you feeling safe and not needing to run. Or you may have found one in your adulthood that help you remember that trusting someone in love and unconditional love is possible. I wanted to bring in the energy of Bastet today. Just for this moment, I know this is corny, but follow through with me here. She is a protector. This is an Egyptian goddess of protection and ecstasy. And if you've ever met a cat, their boundaries are flawless. They're very good at their boundaries. And no one ever questions them for when they are applying their boundaries to anyone. It's simply like, oh, that's a cat. That's going to be a cat. Cat's going to do that. You know, cat's going to whap you, slice you, bite you, just to get you out of their space so they can continue having their nap and enjoying the pleasure of being alive. I would say that if you start seeing black cats around or you've been seeing black cats around, you have a black cat, it may have been a literal delivery of this sort of reflection and this mirror so you to fortify that part of your soul back. Some of us didn't believe that our boundaries mattered after we our boundaries were so violated as a child. We need to reclaim that. So we must know now what is proper boundaries. So again, we also are no longer impeding other people's boundaries by over, I want to say over indulging in their energy because it's going to cause issues. (laughs) They are eventually going to push back. And then you're going to be dealing with abandonment when we don't want to deal with that. So you need to know properly your boundaries. So if you need help with that, I would consider calling in an animal or a spirit guide to aid you and kind of give you those nudges and hints when you're in your lowest lows or if you are doing something that isn't in the right direction for you. And these gentle, loving, unconditional energies these raw, primal, animalistically aware and integrated beings are going to give you that mirror to remind you what is a, what is okay in nature, what kind of pushback and boundaries are okay. Another major guide that wanted to come through were, were the dragons for this one and the lions and turtles or a, a lion turtle, perhaps if you've heard of them. But first we're going to do dragons because dragon turtle is a thing in Chinese culture. That's actually what 
um, Bowser was, was based off of, but in, you know, we don't need to go into Mario land, but just so those Westerners maybe have an idea. It does come from a more ancient thing of this dragon turtle. And in Avatar, the last airbender, there is a lion turtle, which is basically such a huge beast. There's a whole city on its back. And these beings were the great protectors. The dragons are the great protectors, <laughs> you know, the loving ones. The dragons represent, a lot of people think, the actual soul of our planet and the soul of the divine feminine as the, this pr fierce protective energy. And when I was in my car accident last year, for example, it was a very deep purple or black dragon that appeared to me and came through my body basically with this intense fierceness I've ever experienced of somebody screwed up and we are not going to let our guard down again, basically energy. And that energy has not left me. And I have been working with it since I have two rose quartz dragon skulls now. Because Quan Yin has two rose dragons or pink dragons. And the Sophia energy has gold dragons. So that's another option. But those are a masculine energy. And the pink energy was more for me. I also have been recommending a lot of people get rose quartz to heal the heart because of the mm -hmm. devastation that can happen from these abuses in your past, from your childhood. And there's so many other occurrences of abuse that do happen uh, other than your own family striking you when you're feeling like you literally have no one else to protect you. But then it continues. You get coerced into going into social situations with these social expectations. And to some levels of extremeness, it contain other family members and other members of society begin to abuse you physically. Mm -hmm. It may not get that bad, but even just telling a child to sit down and shut up <laughs> and listen to propaganda when they're a tiny is abuse. And the schooling system, competitive sports, um, even the workplace is filled with coercion, subversion, and abusive techniques. They were raising a slave race through these techniques not guardians, not protectors, not gods and goddesses incarnate, which is what you are. So let's just re, re, let's reestablish that level of confidence and awareness in yourself now. And if you are having troubles with that, like I said, I offered some new techniques or some techniques on how like salt water, drinking salt water, Celtic salt water, and bathing in, in Epsom salts is an excellent way to fortify your aura. But I'll be perfectly honest with you as a person, an individual, one thing that helped me burst through the abusive cycles and basically me just trying to go along with what everyone else in my life wanted and just so I wouldn't receive pushback because I was terrified of how that would end based off of very deep, deep trauma from my childhood, just never getting solved. <laughs> but I was always doing what my parents wanted me to do, for example, or my, my friends or the, my, my partners at the time, I was always doing what they were more comfortable with so I could avoid basically causing any conflict with them or having, I would say, yeah, basically any sort of conflict, <laughs> I was avoiding that. But what helped me the most, and I'm going to have to say this very carefully because obviously this is going to be a public video, but what helped me break out and boost my, my energy body, my aura, to amplitudes that I had never experienced, but it is a temporary, it's a temporary experience because we can't sustain that energy level. But just to even reach and break through to those speeds and those intensities was extremely liberating for me. And I left my family. I moved out on my own. I, I began my company. And I began doing whatever the hell I felt I needed to do. And I stopped asking or looking for permission from other people because in this, 
in this medicine experience that I had that I was guided to do and felt confident doing burst me through and showed me what I was capable of, how large my aura really was, how ancient I really was, how easily you actually, your focus is what manipulates reality and creates it in front of your eyes. I was able to experience this, this level of consciousness through this particular medicine. And this mycelial network of the, um, of the, I want to say blue cube and cysts was what I was guided to go to. Now, I don't, I'm not saying you need to do this, but if you never have, and you've been still like bowing to other people's needs and not not confident enough to take on what it is that you truly want or not even exactly sure yet what it is you truly want to actualize what it is that you came here and incarnated to do then i would recommend a larger dose obviously of this the first time with like a fruit smoothie or something and some nuts and seeds because they all kind of work together it's a foraging diet what is it that you forage? You can forage the nuts, the seeds, the fruits, and these mycelium from the, from the forest floor. They all kind of work together in the forest and they speak to each other and they have a very established network and chemical base. I was guided to take two I'm trying to say this in a smart way measurement <laughs> to measurement not two of uh, the items but two of a certain weight <laughs> i should say of this particular medicine and i was naive at the time i didn't realize how much that was going to be it took me a while to eat it all and get it down but the experience that i had literally burst me through my crown and it put me into my causal chakra my higher chakra above my head i was actually about i want to say i was existing at almost like 10 to 15 feet tall during some of that experience but it, you work your way up to it because you just basically expand and expand and expand because the amplitude and the speed of your system starts to go up your charge goes up but it's a temporary experience like i said but i feel very guided to tell you this in this video i wasn't i didn't even write it down but this is truly what initiated me to be able to take on my own power again and know that other people have no idea what's better for me they don't and they don't even know what's good for themselves because they have long lost their path most of these people they've long lost their truth and they may tell you what it is they dream of doing or what they think they should be doing but they don't have the power to actualize that and they may never but this medicine which i am now grateful to feel comfortable also initiating ceremony and and working with people who want to initiate with this it is a life changer. It is something that I believe is going to be a part of the next few years of this ascension process, this mycelial network becoming more established and helping us repair and push off some generational trauma and these, these uh, unhealthy, I would say, behaviors that you were perpetuating through the subversion and coercion techniques that we experience as children. So again, it was a great soul retrieval for myself. I experienced myself in my more expanded form, the form that was slapped down and slapped in a way and disoriented and discombobulated by my family to try and get me to obey them, which <laughs> I was a great kid. So it was extremely unnecessary. It was a sign of their lack of development basically and their call for help it was a big call for help we just didn't realize it back then <laughs> but now we see that there is a problem and that is why we are here so in this process also there is often spirit guides 
and other gods and goddesses that are existing in these higher vibrational planes of the Akashic records, even of our planet that we become access to and remember the codes from and can mirror in our current reality, thanks to their archetypal solidarity to be that specific, these specific archetypes and these specific memories. So if you are seeing gods and goddesses and synchronicities about these beings, just look at what archetypes that they represent and know that you must continue to mirror those things in order for you to align with who you are. You need to remember who you are in order to be a good protector. The people who do not remember who they are don't know how to protect anybody because they don't know what they were even... Um, they don't even know how to protect themselves, to be honest, because they don't know what direction they even want to go. Another wonderful technique that is not involved eating anything is martial arts. Another wonderful way to build up that protection again, to build up your aura again, your confidence in your body is martial arts or Qigong, but martial arts is also a wonderful one. Obviously, I'm not encouraging you to just go ahead and start using martial arts against anyone or spar with anybody. But even in doing so, you may experience that euphoria of your power again, where you couldn't strike back to defend yourself as a child. And that non-ability to strike back is locked in your system. So you need to learn how to strike back properly. You'll need to know, and it will bring you a huge level of peace and confidence to have this training. Huge. Your body will feel aligned and in its power again. So much so. The magic that people also do, like protection spells and so on, is also, in my opinion, I want to tiptoe on this, is also a sign of giving your power away in some forms, sometimes spells, protective spells. This is putting something outside of yourself and saying, this is going to protect me, but you haven't put anything inside of yourself to show you that you are protected already in the quantum. You have to say it is already done or else you're constantly going to be seeking after the satisfaction. So you must say, I am protected. I am protection. I am a protector. And claim that. If you haven't done it yet, it's okay. We are here to protect ourselves and the innocent as viable, healthy adults during this time in the earth realm. We are going to be encouraging you to continue working with your solar plexus specifically. So wearing gold, gold, the color gold, looking at the sun, experiencing the sun on a daily basis, sun charging, again, doing cardio activity and, and drinking and experiencing the yellow ray, turmeric milk is also a wonderful one for this. Just fortifying your solar plexus. Whenever you start feeling out of your power, immediately work on fortifying and loving your solar plexus again. That core of who you are, your inner sun. Make it sure it's shining brightly. And if it's not, and you don't know where to go, your, all your techniques aren't working, reach out to somebody who looks like their inner sun is shining. And let them know maybe that you need a little bit help, a little bit of mirroring, a little bit of a boost. And they may send you a song or they may send you a picture of a dragon or they may give you a hug, you know, if you're in physical presence. But it's okay also to lean on one another as we are humans. We are a tribal peoples and doing everything all on your own is an excellent skill and is something that we are being able to develop in this life, but it isn't extremely necessary. And there is a reason social media exists. You will begin to match frequency with other people and find those who can 
give you that boost and love on you when you need a little bit of help and you've done everything you can on your own to try and boost yourself up and hold your form. But always, always know that it's okay as well if you can't fully hold your form to reach out to somebody and they may not be able to help you. Definitely go with your instincts. Look for someone strong and unbothered for sure that you trust. And if you don't know if you can trust them yet, just, just work on them. You know, give them, give them a little love and see what they give you back. It's okay. It's okay to test your environment. It's okay to test the people in your life and see what they give you. And it's okay if they don't give you what you expect either. You can politely give, give them the space that they need and perhaps try them again later or wait for them to approach you later. But it's okay. There's usually when you're going through something, people in your tribe and in your mm -hmm. vibrational frequency are also going to be going through something. So it may be very comforting or it could be very triggering. So you just have to have the confidence in yourself to know that it's worth a shot to reach out to other people. But if it doesn't work out that you still got you and you should just make another turmeric milk and begin listening to some solar plexus frequencies, start looking at visuals or visualizers of the yellow and gold energy and doing and doing mantras and positive affirmations about your power. I am powerful. I am power. I am empowered. Things like that. These sort of I am affirmations. Your your uh, your ability to know who you are and what you want to be is all coded by you. So just speak what it is that you are and what you want to be, and you it, you must become it. You must match that. So just be stubborn with it. And I would definitely recommend you use music. Definitely recommend you use music. Sound baths also. If you are in need of some aura clearing and protection, I would recommend you go to a sound bath and physically be around the song bowls, the chimes, the gongs, you know, the didgeridoo, the, uh, the droning sort of Oh, I forget what they call that one, but there's a lot of instruments that can create this sort of feeling of, of surrender. And you can, you know, usually you lay out on a yoga mat, you get a blanket on top of you, sometimes a, a little pillow. Sometimes they'll put uh, something over your eyes, like a piece of black uh, fabric and allow you to go deep during that sound healing and get taken into your deeper healing levels. And a lot of people do fall asleep. They snore during these, you know, the practitioner will probably nudge you or put you on your side. If you need to like be readjusted, so you don't mess with everyone else's meditation, but it's worth, it's worth a shot. So if you've never been to a sound healing meditation, you may be like, well, that sounds super simple. And if, like, why would a bunch of instruments being played help me? But you'd be astonished You'd be astonished at how effective and simple it is. And it's not listening to music out of a speaker. You're not listening to digitized sound. You're going to be listening to true vibrations coming from crystal song bowls. The E uh, as well, I have an E song bowl. I should have brought it for this one, but the E note I'm aware of is the solar plexus note. And I have a crystal song bowl for that. And I do play it when we need to clear the house and fortify I would say that internal innocence, that internal purity, because the song bowls are so innocent and pure in their own sense too. They don't have any other goal other than to be perfectly, you know, resonant. And I'm so grateful for them. I'm so grateful that tool exists for us because it is definitely going to help us continue. And as a person, I genuinely believe that doing these sound healing ceremonies and these sound, these sound experiences is something I want to pursue in this physical life in this time as a healing modality, because you can hit so many people with the frequencies at once. And truly, I've never been so healed or relaxed in a scenario with, from any other medicine It is so much easier and it's, you know, drug free, it's medicine free, it's completely available to everyone. Uh, to, unless even the deaf, like the, the frequencies still work on you. 
it is, there's a reason why those giant bells were all taken down out of towns. Like who knows what frequency they actually created, but those were to harmonize the village. And so let's harmonize our villages. Let's work on creating these sound baths in, in our local areas, in our homes. Whenever you start building up that level of insecurity or that tension, purify it with a crystal song bowl or a Tibetan song bowl or some, some chimes or, you, you know what I'm saying? A, even just strumming the guitar or a, a harp or getting a gong. Oh, I want a gong so bad, my favorite, but invest in these sort of things and invest in it, I would say first in the solar plexus notes and the heart as well, but the root also very much, especially if you were having troubles from, or if you were struck as a child, like I said, on your bottom or something as a, as a kid with whatever, I know things got pretty violent out there with people got pretty creative, but we need to re-resonate those areas basically. And we can do it with tuning forks also, and these song bowls and so on. So that's another code that I really needed to get out and let you guys know about. I know you probably know this, but I want you to know that this is going to help majorly. And if you've been resistant, it's not worth it. The more you have this resistance, the more toxic you're going to become. So we need to really just ring you out with frequencies and do it as many times as you need come back to it as many times as you need these, these sound baths. I promise this is one of the major reasons we are here is to create these sound baths big time. And they go well with color as well, color and visuals, obviously not too overwhelming, but it's wonderful to meditate on an image that is super positive, super activating like myself, I wa I looked over an image of a woman with all of her chakras lit up and connecting to source and grounding into the earth. And that was such a wonderful visual to watch while I was going through this sound bath experience uh, on the 14th this last month. It was amazing. And I was like, I have to bring this into the workshop. This replenishment you know, that you can experience is wonderful, but there is also an issue with discernment. And this is again with the boundaries and this is our power and our protection. These sacred healing chambers are being exploited by people sometimes who don't know what they're doing. They're trying, but they don't get it. And you can tell, you'll be able to notice because you'll listen to it for a few minutes and feel the, the chaotic energy that they're playing. Listen to what the song bath person is making. And if it doesn't feel good, get out. You know, don't be polite. Get out. Just get up and leave. Because if you're going to put yourself through someone else's chaotic tantrum that they're banging on instruments, you're abusing yourself. And you need to learn how to get up and get out when it's necessary in any healing, in any, on any YouTube video, in any place, in any location, that is your protection energy. You need to listen to it. And if you don't, you're going to learn why you needed to listen. And I don't want that to happen to you if necessary. So listen, you're not going to, doesn't matter if you hurt their feelings, they should know that that was not good for you. Just even by your, you don't have to say anything. You just need to leave. And that's totally fine because you probably will have paid them anyway. So you just get out and know that you will get your money back and you will find someone better. Don't give up on the sound healing experiences. Don't give up on sound baths. There is people awakening right now, every day, extremely talented sound healers who are coming from all over the galaxy to bring this medicine to us. So don't worry you will find a good spot. It is worth it. It's worth it to keep your standards high and clean. That's called self-respect. <laughs> so how else are we going to be replenishing ourselves so we may be protectors? If you are experiencing any 
I want to say evasive behaviors or substance abuse behaviors in order to escape, escape the conflict or escape a situation without actually escaping, you have to stop basically and replenish your body. You have to allow your body to replenish and you need to define things that are not ingestibles and are not chemical, I should say. Don't add these chemicals to your body that allow you to disassociate and pull away on a frequent basis. It's not how you should be using them anyways. If you're using anything to disassociate and numb yourself, you've, you've gone too far. There is an issue and you can come see me. We can work it out. Ascensiondiaries.com for sessions, but I want you to replenish yourself. If anyone, you know, if you needed a sign, this is it. This is it. We need you to fortify. We need you to replenish because you have seen what the globe is up to. We need to raise our vibration and not run. We have to not run from this life. We have to face it. This is true reparenting technique. You really just have to be the parent that the world needs. And for myself as a woman, you know, I have maternal instinct, but mine activated in a unique way. And I, for those of you who have maternal and paternal instincts activating, you either are like, yep, I need to have my own family and I'm going to protect them. Right. And I'm going to, you know, raise some good next generation and we're going to work together to make so sound baths and, you know, bring medicine to people or at least hold space for healing of others through, you know, big bonfires and drums, you know, it is amazing work. So easy, really. But, uh, this, parenting, this activation that I personally had to my first maternal instinct, intense feeling was during the 2017 August sol total solar eclipse that we had in, in, um, I was over by McLeod river over by Shasta national park. And I was looking at Mount Shasta as well, but what activated me that day to the point where I felt I was amongst my children and amongst the people I needed to protect was when I went to this event and I watched a whole panel of people who had gone there discussing what is disclosure, what is, what is necessary to replenish our world, what is necessary to heal us all. And there was a whole group of people there who were listening and watching and something in me just cracked open and I began weeping. <laughs> big time. And I know mother, like that mothers know, and parents know that feeling where it's just this overwhelming feeling of parental pride and intensity and this awareness of what it is you're here to protect, what it is you're here to prolong. I had that activation, not from having my own children, not from my friends and family, but from going to this event, going on a limb, going to this event for the eclipse amongst some people in a, a community I had joined on, on social media. And I went there and that is when I was activated. That's when I was activated to be a guardian. It's when I felt true parental love over a group of people. And I was weeping like a fool and I couldn't stop myself. I had never felt so much joy and purpose and satisfaction in my heart then I had seen this like group of people having this discussion and talking about these topics. It was extremely eye-opening for me. And I have continued taking care of this community and so on since with great happiness. My heart is full with what I do with my time and engaging with our community. Those people who are constantly pushing against the narrative to look beyond and between the lines of the lies and continue demanding discernment and disclosure of the lies and the abuse and the abusive lies <laughs> and abusive techniques as well that were meant to pull in and break you.
So I want you to look back now on a moment, perhaps where that similar feeling occurred to you, where you felt that true, I want to say permission in a way from the universe to protect over something other than yourself and how liberating that was to feel that purpose. Let's engage with that feeling again up in our heart chakra now. And if you have a pen and paper, I want you to scribble down that note also so you can meditate on that moment in your life later. Just so you can remind yourself where it is that you were truly activated to be a guardian, where you felt that your protective and you know parental energy was welcome. Write that down. That is yours. That is true. And whatever it led you to learn, it allowed you to truly love and truly engage your power in a new way. And that is the sort of energy I'm trying to now cultivate again in you right now. Let's fall in love with our world, with our galaxy, with our entire multiverse, with that same level of happiness and of purposefulness and of protection. Imagine you are the entire multiverse and how warm and amazing it feels to know that you're all encompassing, unbreakable, and protected. Feels good. We're dealing with the water, the sky, and the land right now, which is apparently under attack, but it's all we've been having issues with this a very long time it is now becoming in the awareness of people who are so traumatized and chaotic that they're finally getting pointed in the direction of this to maybe heal or become aware of what they really are here to do which is protect this world protect the innocent so they may continue growing healthily and take over the role of protector when you're starting to get old or whatever, if something happens to you. Now, a few other things before we finish today's workshop. I want you to engage with your earth star chakra next. Now, this is the chakra that's below your feet basically locking you onto the ground, into the ground, or locking you as a piece of the earth. And now earth star chakra has been a big theme that's come through in my life and in surrounding people in my life have taken on the name earth star, not just one friend of mine, but I have multiple friends who have earth star, whatever, as their company title, as their healing name, as their medicinal work. I have two friends of mine, strong personal friends of mine who have taken on this role. And I always looked at them and was very proud of them to like have picked something so specific and to know that about themselves. But I didn't know how to engage the topic myself in the same way. I just was like, yes, I'm aware of that chakra. Yes, I am a part of the earth. And yes, and I moved on because personally, I am just more more present in my upper chakras for the most part, for the most part. But I really had an epiphany the other day on how to integrate this earth star chakra in order to fully ground and recircuit you to the earth who is, she never, you know, she never struck you. The sun as your father never struck you or told you they weren't proud of you or, you know, you weren't good enough. Neither of this earth or the sun really told that to you unless you kind of fell off your bike and scraped your knee or whatever against the gravel, but the, it was your action against the earth that caused you to get torn up. It's not like the earth came up and hit you in the face. For the most part, that doesn't happen, but it does to some people. So I'm not saying it can't, and I'm not saying that the sun can't give you a nice clearing slap, but it's not malicious. None of it's malicious. It is almost just acceptable movement of energy but to integrate the earth star and be so grounded and unbothered 
that no, everything will just bounce right off your protected aura is to claim that you are an earth star. Does that make sense? I want you to say, I am an earth star. This was the code that I unlocked. It was basically that you have to be the earth star. You have to become, you are an earth star. You are an earth star. And what are, what is a star? You know, it is someone who is fantastic, who is, you know, you, you're, they're extremely talented. They're shining. They're an example. They're a shining example. They're exuding confidence. They are shining basically. And stardom in our world has been super distorted in order to try and again, pull us away from source, from love is this, this idol worship and so on, which is again, giving your power away, saying that they are the star and you're just a whatever, you know, you're just a piece of clay, but no, you are an earth star and you are allowed to be a star. You're allowed to be an earth star. You're allowed to be a true influence of brightness, of glory, of joy, of your true vibration, of your codes. No matter what codes you start gathering and awakening again, when you start accepting and working with your synchronicities, you know, if you're seeing crows every day, look that up, incorporate that into your stardom, okay? If you're seeing rabbits everywhere, Look that up and incorporate that into your stardom. You could literally sew patches all of, like I've said so many times, of all of the animals and spirit guides that you ever knew and wear that and have your star quality shine even more just through visible representation of what is true for your soul. But to claim that you are an earth star re-energizes your body immediately. Does it not feel good to feel like a star? I'm just saying it was very clarifying for me. So I really hope that that code lights something inside of you if it hasn't yet. And then so this internal light and this understanding that you are an earth star, that you were created here, you're wanted here, and you're actually full of potential to completely shine and blow everyone away with what is your unique codes, your true shine whatever frequency of light that you really are. Cause you know, every sun and star in the sky, we can see, you can see all the different wavelengths of light and figure out what their chemical composition is. You can figure out how they're made in a way too. And we're the same way. And we do it in more creative ways now. Like I said, with like patches and pins and symbols and color and so on, and never stop doing that. Never stop visually representing what it is that's coming out of you. What is shining out of you? What is your stardom? What is that? Show it to us, enjoy it. Because if everyone does that, there's still gonna be an extreme variety of and, and new ideas and potential. And you really know who it is that you are relating to because they're showing you. They are truly shining and their earth star is activated and they are like a walking, talking rainbow bridge, deeply connected to their earth stardom and their knowledge that they are earth, earth love, earth spirit and sharing that with the world. And in so this will also clear the images imprisoned within you. It will clear the images that no longer describe you, that someone may have tried to stick to you based off of their opinion, but were they a star? Did they really shine? Did those people who said those things to you, were they shining? And, you know, did they seem happy? Did they seem happy? Did they seem like that their amplitude was high? Did it seem like that they have done the, the spirit journey, you know, the individual spirit journeys out there, have they, does it feel, usually no, usually no. So again, now we're going to call on anything that is no longer ours to carry, no longer ours to identify with. We're going to call it up into our solar plexus because that's where it gets stuck. All the things that are not us and we're just trying to figure it out like, 
it's like this conflict because when it doesn't match, sometimes we take it on just to try and figure out what's going on. So let's call in all the things that do not describe you properly. The false beliefs or just the unmatching templates from your divine blueprint, from your divine template, from your chemical composition, from your specific starlight. And release. Take a deep breath in and through the nose and then take another deep breath in at the end and then release all the air out. So deep breath in and then a final like at the end just to like soak up a little more air and then breathe it all out, okay? Ready? Back to the earth. Back to the earth as raw material. May it replenish the earth. May it find its true place. One more time. That is not mine. I am an earth star. Go back to your original sender. May you be well. I'm going to add a little kiss on the end too. Just like off you go. The little love on the end, you know, just take it back. And I love you. Nice. A few more notes before we finish. Your teeth. Your teeth are the nodes of your entire meridian system. So if you are having any issues with any tooth in your mouth, I want you to look it up after this workshop. Look up teeth meridians. You will see a map. Match the tooth. Figure out what organ that is. And then look up a video how to eat to, repl to replenish or fix this organ or meridian. What techniques to fix this organ or meridian in Qigong? Or that's another suggestion. So physical, like through your food and through your diet, what sort of chemicals do you need to repair that area? Because the teeth are going to show you what organ needs help. And then physically repair your teeth through oil pulling and through, uh, there's a lot of techniques also to, and rinses and so on that you can do with, uh, with, I have my on guard, uh, doTERRA oil that I mix in with water and I swish that around and I do, I do ghee oil pulling and coconut oil pulling. And it has been replenishing my teeth as well because I was having that issue for sure. And then we need to also go into the, I want to say the pericardium system and the lymphatic system as well as what was big theme for me personally. So I got to give those codes because that's what I was working on since I saw you last. But the pericardium um, meridian goes from the heart. Well, it goes up from the foot, but it goes up through the heart and it goes out the right arm and down the right arm out the, I want to say it's the ring finger or the middle finger of the hand. Now I'm forgetting. It's one of those fingers. But basically, if you're noticing that you're having any buildup of energy in your lymph down by on your sides of your body, or if you're having any sort of tension in your heart space, I would encourage you to work with the pericardium meridian and do some massages and acupuncture to help release that area. And ask your body what it is that it needs to do next. What, where, what is it that it needs to do next with whatever it is. If there's anything in your system where your confidence for a second takes a hit, because you're like, oh, I don't know what to do about this problem. Amazing. We're living in the age of information. You can literally look it up and learn the most amazing knowledge from people who are doing free content on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all these places, Twitter. 
just Google, image, search, whatever. Look it up. Take care of yourself. Check it out. You can't be strong protector if you are letting your body rot away. If anything, that is a sign that you have way too many cords out of you and your aura is has holes in it. So we need to do that proper maintenance and reestablish your energy. You're going to be no good to us or anyone else in just a few just a few years, not even like a few months with the rate that the, we're getting from the radiation from the sun, it's going to accelerate the problems. And you must at that same degree of importance, take it seriously, whatever it is that's calling to you, take it seriously and do your best every day to make progress towards that specific thing. Don't forget about it. Don't give up on yourself have mark the day that you notice this issue and you know circle it on your calendar or whatever and come back to that day every month and check on yourself and see your progress celebrate yourself for protecting yourself properly and therefore being a trustworthy guardian as well Okay, well, there is so much more on this topic, but truly what I want to leave you all with today and in this, in this workshop is that you are wanted here. And I know even if you are super sick and super broken down, the fact that you're still here is a sign of that. I've watched enough people perish and go through difficulties. And I've watched enough people go through them and just rise right back out of it into their healthiest form. So you can go in many directions, but the fact that you're here and listening to this is likely that you are meant to stay with us. You're meant to stay here. You're meant to fortify and you're meant to be a protector and a guardian mm. of your inner child of your genetic lineage and of your tribe, of your planet, of your solar system, of your galaxy, of your quadrant, of your timeline, of your multiversal experience. It's you. You are there. You are power. You are existing and you are needed. You are part of the web. And we need you there. We had a our largest solar flare since before 2022 happened just the other day. It was an X 2.28 class solar flare. It was a very interesting experience and an activation for everyone as they all are. But if you had any sort of issues with pain or I would say psychic attacks or purging of emotions, I want you to write that down. I want you to write down what you experienced and claim it. Because being a guardian is also claiming responsibility over your own energy enough to know what's yours and what's not yours. And if you know you got some stuff you need to deal with, don't make it anyone else's problem <laughs> by ignoring it, basically. So I need you to claim what it is that you're struggling with with confidence, because it is your hint from your higher self or from your greater soul, or your greater aura about where you need to focus, laser focus the conscious energy to replenish and fortify your auric field again. We are never going to be as unhealthy as we were before this video. We are opening a new life, a new approach. It's done. It already happened. This is it. You're going to be leaving this workshop with the knowledge that you have to take care of yourself and protect yourself because I need you to. And in doing so, you're going to learn better how to protect others and help others find their way too. And if we can all have ourselves earth starred, 
and totally ablaze with our our confidence and our our knowledge that we have our back that we have the ability to look after ourselves and take care of ourselves no matter what happens that level of confidence is going to speak volumes it's going to literally make you a massive earth star people are going to be bending in your gravity because of how much you've been able to know about what you're capable of with yourself with how you can manipulate energy and the elements of this reality to keep your earth star shining brightly and and honestly the self respect is huge so just for the final note let's just write on our card or whatever i respect myself i respect myself okay next i protect my star okay right final one i am unconditional love and awareness And finally, I remember who I truly am. Now your ego and your mind might be like, oh, I don't, that's not, you might argue with these, but guess what? You're literally having to reprogram that. The fact that your mind doesn't even believe it is a six. That's just a sign of success from the anti-life agenda of mind control that we've been enduring. So it's okay. But guess what? They know how the minds work and they programmed you this way to be self-destructive, to basically collapse your star. So you can't outshine them. There is a lot of comp competition on this planet, but unfortunately for them who are not getting the picture, we are in the age of Aquarius and it is time for humanitarian cooperation and stars collabing. It's time for constellations. You need to be the star, a bright star in a constellation of beings to create a bigger archetype, to create a bigger structure I remember who I truly am. That is the code that I want to leave you with in this video. When you remember who you truly are, you know what you need to do in every moment. I know this was a big, this was a big code. I hope that these codes and this knowledge and this discussion again was inspiring to you and is able to kick you into a higher frequency to consider and clear off things. If you maybe noticed that you were in a lower frequency before we did this workshop and you're feeling more elevated, more confident, more aligned, more of your star quality, you feel like an earth star again, an earth superstar even, excellent. I want you to feel the smile on your face. I want you to grin. Ha ha, I am unbreakable. <laughs> I am a star. And I belong here. I remember who I am. And I know how to protect. So thank you all so much for joining in this workshop today. I really appreciate it. I hope that you start doing some journaling work and you take this information and work with it more, add to it if you need to. Again, message me, comment 
If there's more that you want to add to the, the topics and codes that I brought in today, I know I don't go super in depth into one thing, but it's because I wanted to give a nice little spread of all the things that did come through for me for this particular healing and this workshop. Now, we're going to be doing another workshop. We do them every 18th. The next month, March, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to see right now. It's like, what am I going to see what's coming through? And honestly, what I'm seeing right now, what came into my mind was luck. And my phone just buzzed. Luck, which I wasn't expecting. I literally hadn't gotten that code until just now. So thank you all for co-channeling that with me. Those of you who are in my Patreon and who are here for the live workshop, all, all 10 of you who came tonight, I just want to give you my truest gratitudes for allowing me to give, give this information, giving me a purpose and a direction to channel, again, my energy and my starness into an effective light that is, that is approachable, readable, collaborated. And thank you for joining my constellation and, in, and creating a greater light, a greater shape, a greater archetypal strength about protection. And for next month, we are going to work on the topic of luck or the code of luck, which I wasn't expecting to say again, but I'm looking forward to what that's going to look like. And it is kind of funny for me to just be like, that's it, but that's kind of how it works. It's also wonderful because when we channeled that it was going to be protection this month, of course, I didn't know that Turkey was going to basically crack in half from, from earthquakes and then all, the, all of these train derailments and satellites being shot down and all of the, you know, things popping in all these different directions where, you know, you're like, who's really protecting us? This never used to happen. Like, what happened to the protectors? Why isn't our, you know, hired guns doing something, you know? And it was, it was like showing us where the power had been given away. And it also showed new people where they had to take their power back. You know, they may have to pack up their houses and move a lot of these people out of these waterways, out of these areas of, you know, a lot of people who literally lost their homes in these earthquakes that were so massive. It was a huge event that happened during in, in Turkey, Syria area, that whole area. It was extremely not normal to have days and days and days of that specific area shining and like earthquaking. Sorry, something got in my eye, but protection against all that and protection within my knowledge that I knew that there was more to this, that there is more to this and there is true protection available, but the appearance of lack of protection was a huge theme on the global scale this last month. So I'm glad, again, we are refortifying the awareness that we are capable of not only coding ourselves to be unbreakable, and being extremely confident in the, you know, in God creator sources plan, but also taking our power back and moving ourselves into smarter places. We are nomadic people. We're a nomadic species and people did just move. They did just move. If there was an issue, they moved out because they knew nature was doing something and they needed to go. I genuinely believe that the areas that are being currently I want to say the waterways that are being currently brought up through these derailments and these chemical spills and so on. If you didn't see the map yet, there is a map, but basically you can see how all the waterways moving down and they drain through Texas into the Gulf of Mexico. It is the glacial melt area. All those waterways are caused by the glacial melting every year. Those rivers are fed by the, the glacial melting every year. It's all coming down. Uh, it's all coming down from the north. And these are the flood areas. And I've been seeing for a very long time that we were going to be dealing with flooding. We were going to be seeing in terraformed America 
because the caps, the this, the Arctic cap was going to be, the North Pole is going to be moving. Therefore, the Arctic cap and energy of that water is going to be changing. They keep trying to tell us it is, it is going to melt. It is getting warmer here. And I do believe that if you are smart enough and you're reading the cues of Earth and you have no fear, that you will find where it is you need to go to be away from these melt from this water, from this intensity. I believe this may be also a way to give a hint and kind of give an opportunity for the instincts of people, the people who are still in tap with their soul and their instincts to see a problem, physically know that the water there is poisoned or it temporarily not proper for them anymore and get out. I feel this deeply. I know that might be a little ballsy, but that it's okay, you know, because truly it's still going to be up to you. You can't, you can lead a horse to water, right? But you can't make him drink it. You can show a horse a poison water and they may still drink it, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But I believe that there is benevolence as well as, you know, the appearance, appearance of malevolence. A lot of it is secret benevolence, in my opinion. And that's how I see the world. I see the silver linings in pretty much every single thing in my life. And that's truly how I feel so joyful all the time. I feel connected to the truth. I've asked the earth. I sit in meditation with it and I get all these other ideas about what's going on. And I go with it and I flow with it and I get synchronicities and I start being able to build my confidence because all of a sudden the universe is shining that energy and that knowledge back to me to validate that experience, to kind of build that case in my own experience. And I just genuinely want to share this with you because I care about you and I want to do my part as a protector and share my abilities and say, if you were in that waterway area and in those areas, I would recommend you move away because it is a sign in my opinion of what is to come. And just like the fires and just like the lockdowns and the, I want to say extreme levels of rules and, you know, I want to say deterrence almost to live in certain states and under certain governances and areas that you're like, oh, politically, I don't want to be here anymore. Whatever it took to get to you, the minds of you, whatever, it seems like it had to fall so far to be a political situation for people or an economic situation for people where they just literally had to leave and go somewhere else. There is a benevolence there. You should trust. You should trust it more. You should trust it more. Gaia, our planet loves us very much. And those who, who are in alignment with her, she wants to keep around because we are her. We are her in body. We are her expression. She wants to walk around on the surface and enjoy herself through us. And uh, the more of us that are around that are in tap with her, the more fun she can have. So she may just be genuinely sloughing off and removing and toxifying, like literally removing the parasites through poisoning them out of these waterways areas, but also out of this flood area that needs to be released and these Arctic waters that need to come down. This is again, I, I mean, Ed, you know, Edgar Casey was made these maps, you know, back and he's, he's not around anymore. He, he thinks he might be incarnated again in writing books, but it's possible, but it doesn't matter. Cause guess what? In every other language, there is seers not just the English language. It's extremely privileged. You know, some people think that just people who speak English know what's going on. No, there is seers and people who are genuinely spiritually connected in all areas of the world, activating right now, meeting in the astral plane, working together on protecting this planet and migrating people, migrating their own people away from danger. I genuinely believe this, and I genuinely think I'm watching the prophecy unroll before my eyes, how we are being politely shuffled around based off of whatever it is that works basically with the psyche of what's going on to save the innocent, to save the next generations. 
you know. <laughs> so if you were in those waterways, may I suggest moving to away from those waterways basically and you can see the floodplain it goes it's basically the midwest down and drains through texas but it comes all the way through canada basically you know and it starts draining through mid-america kind of and down through texas into the gulf that is where the water goes watch where the water goes you can even see it on the map you can see the greenest part of america that's where the water goes there's going to be a lot more of it Therefore, you can actually move away from those areas because you're going to be next to the water, <laughs> just on a wider scale. So I keep feeling like we have to kind of go to the edges, but it seems like everybody was also kind of kicked out of California, but I'm seeing people going back. So it's kind of like California is still on the edge for me about what it wants to do. It's an, it's an asset. It's, it's more complicated. That landmass is not what you think it is, but it's got a thing. And then the Upper East Side also, they are also dealing with a lot of storms over there. So not as heavy much storms on the West Coast as there is in the Upper East, but I did notice that that area was going to be okay, it seemed like, but that was about it. So like Mid-America and like down through Florida and Texas and stuff, that whole area, that area is kind of like a zone. But if you, West Coast seems good decently, obviously, being near the ocean is also a risk. So just get yourself away from there, get yourself away, but it's a huge fault line there too. So just be careful there, you know, maybe go a little bit inward more like, you know, I'm in Arizona and then there's Colorado or Utah and Colorado. Those sort of areas seem like, I know a lot of people say that Colorado is a safe place. Like uh, even in the, you know, in the military and stuff, military people know also the States that are a little bit more, uh, secure for the next terraforming that's going to be happening in our lifetime, apparently. Did you mention a map to reference? I don't have the map on me at this time, but it is on my, I can send it to you guys when I send this recording, or I can basically just, I can post it, a picture or something underneath this video. I can give you a reference to this map. I'm going to work on that part. <sighs> yeah, check out, check out those maps, watch for those maps, because guess what? There's literally like new specials. I we just watched one literally the other day. I totally didn't even, I walked in the room and it was on about the 10 year or a hundred year shifts in the weather and the water and the disasters and the fires and stuff. They're doing these, they're making these reports and this knowledge available. So just look, you know, 100 year, 100 year plan of America's safest places to live or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, the, that information has to come out. It has to come out. It has to be there. And it is there. I've seen it myself. So go ahead and find it. Keep up with me, you know, hit the notification bells on my YouTube, my Instagram, my, um, my telegram too. And I will keep sending this information as I get it. I was able to predict the Mauna Loa, the Mauna Loa eruption before it happened. I've been able to, I, I was able to, you know, I was being told and tapped into Turkey before it happened for like a whole month ahead of time. I'm getting messages to help. So just, to, you know, if you're getting them too, amazing. Thank you so much. And let's work together. Let's, let's keep messaging me, you know, back and forth. Yes. Thank you. I don't want to be doing this all alone. I'm not doing this all alone. I'm just the person, maybe, you know, that's doing it. And I'm happy to be that in your life, but I also want you to expand your horizons and get more than one opinion always for discernment. Because again, we don't want your aura to be sucked off of. We don't want you to lose your power or give your power away to some sort of fearful timeline because we know about this now means that you've just been given the power to survive. I truly, truly believe that we are going to be making these big decisions in the next year, two years of where you need to move your family. It's happening now. 
you can't drink the water in some of these areas. You've got to leave. Okay. It's cool. It's, it's worth it. It's worth it. And if you just need a little bit of help again, reach out, reach out, get a reading from a psychic, you know, figure it out, ask the universe to show you a sign and give it a month. And you'll know by the end of that month, like where you're feeling for sure. And you just got to focus on it. Just like any sort of health area, make that a priority. Show me where I need to go to be safe. I want to survive this, you know, this next hundred years. You just got to want it and the universe will give it to you. Just ask for what you want and it's the permission to give it to you, right? So without, without any more words, I'm going to end this workshop. Again, thank you so much, ascensiondiaries.com to get in contact with me to book my sessions or get the five-week coaching, coaching package that is available so we can work on deeply, you know, sorting yourself out. If you need that help, I'd be happy to do that with you and work with you and also work out whatever it is in exchange that works for us because, oh man, we are so much more beyond currency. <laughs> and I feel that strongly and it brings me great joy. So the more creative you can get, the happier I'm going to be <laughs> with how you want to approach your healing as well. Cause I'm happy to accommodate and have fun with it and do what we can to keep the, the willing and the wanting safe, happy, and supported. That's my job. And it's truly what I was awakened to do. And I'm grateful. I feel like a mother to this planet and to the beings who truly want this planet to be its very best. And I'm glad to be your protector. And in my heart, I feel that. And I hope that in, in turn, you are going to be my protector and join me, at, join me and all these other beings in solidifying the confidence that we are going to be directed and guided in the proper ways to continue thriving and growing. It's an honor, everyone. I will see you next 18th on my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries guardian training tier. And I cannot wait to see what codes we're going to get about luck and so on for next month. It's going to be really interesting. I can't wait. So I will see you then and have a wonderful, have a wonderful rest of your month. And I will see you on the 18th of March.